Okay, now the bit I think you've all been waiting for, how to enable Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for free. Hello guys and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Now a few videos ago I declared the C7 Audi RS6 Avant my favourite Audi RS of all time but that doesn't mean it can't be made even better. In today's video I'm going to share with you some electronic tweaks which are either cheap or completely free which will bring this car even closer to my idea of perfection. For example, how does absolutely free of charge activation of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto sound? You like the sound of that then? Okay, sit tight and let me show you how. Now, as usual, before we get started, I'd like to say a big thank you to all subscribers, new and old. It's going really, really well, but if you haven't subscribed and you're watching this video and you like what you see, then please, please do subscribe. You can either click the icon on the bottom right of your screen, or there's a link in the description of the video below, or just hunt out that famous red button and press that. Now, the good news is to do the free activation of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you do not need a computer and a diagnostic cable. We'll cover that later on, but for the minor tweaks, you do. I'm going to be using VCDS software and their genuine cable. There are other ways of doing these tweaks, but I have a lot of respect for Rostec and Vacom VCDS because 20 years ago they created this product that meant that owners and garages didn't have to go cap in hand to the main dealers every time that their cars put a warning light on. And this was in the Mark IV Golf era when that was a regular occurrence. So they've saved people like me many thousands of pounds and a lot of frustration. That's a really important thing, going to the dealer and just having to deal with them when you can do it all yourself. So yes, it's handy if you've got some device, but a lot of people have got this. And if you take your car in for a service to a VW specialist and you tell them specifically what you want them to tweak, give them the printout off the web page, or I'll put some things in the description of this video, show that to the garage, tell them to tweak that with VCDS. They don't really have to think too hard. They just plug in and follow the instructions and it's done. So maybe we'll do it free of charge with a big service or you can find people on forums that will do it for beer money. I'm actually thinking about providing this as a service for people who are based in Warwickshire or maybe traveling up and down the M40. That's something to watch in the future. Right, let's get cracking with the tweaks, starting with the very frustrating power tailgate on this RS6. Now I do need to point out that not all these tweaks will apply to every single model year of C7, A6, S6 and RS6. This car that I'm testing them on is a C7.5. It's the first model year of the facelift from 2016 and I'm pretty confident most of them will apply to every car produced after this point till when we got the C8 in about 2020 but then that may not be the case for the early cars. However, I'm pretty sure most of the tweaks will apply to most of the cars. Now before we start changing things with VCDS, I should tell you that it's always a good idea to make a note of what you're changing before you change it. For example, when you're changing the coding, make a note of the old coding. When you go into adaptations, make a note of exactly what you've changed in there. Okay, now on to the tailgate. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with power tailgates, primarily because manufacturers tend to restrict some of their functionality. For example, on this RS6, you can open the power tailgate from switching the driver's door card, from the remote key, and also, of course, from a button on the tailgate itself, but you can only close it with the button on the inside of the trim here. Now I can only assume this is for safety reasons. They don't want people closing the tailgate remotely because you might not be aware of what's happening in that area. And I kind of understand that, but there is a safety function in the tailgate that will not crush people to death like a car in a scrapyard if you're leaning into the boot when somebody closes it, as I will demonstrate now. I probably should have tested this, shouldn't I? There we go. So. No big deal. So I think it's worth reprogramming the control module to allow you to close the tailgate, not only from the key, but also from the driver's door card. Let me, let me um, just demonstrate that now. Okay, go into the central convenience module number 46, and here we're gonna alter the coding. The good news is that with this module, it all seems to be fully documented by VCDS. There's no experimental coding. Go into the long coding helper, and select bytes to bit to and check that box that says comfort operation remote control active save your changes and that's the first bit done now we'll move on to the trunk electronics where we need to alter 
one of the adaptations. Firstly though, we need to log in. So some control modules require you to log in to do any changes. It's pretty straightforward. The code there is one, two, three, four, five, and then select adaptations. And we're looking for things to do with the rear lid. So first up, we're gonna alter this one that's activation using rear lid opening button in remote key tap function for closing. Set that from not active to active. Say do it and that will update that to active. And then there's one more setting that was for the key. We need to enable the button in the driver's door. So again, select that. Activation using rear lid remote unlocking switch tap function for closing and set that from not active to active. Save that and that is job done. Okay, so we're now ready for the big moment. And this is quite useful on a cold day like today. You might have your hands in your pockets. You might want to close the tailgate. You can just keep them in your pockets. And now for the switch in the driver's door card for this. We need the ignition on. Quite possibly programmable, so you don't need it on, but we'll leave it on for now. And then let's put the ignition on. Okay, and then this switch operates the same way, whether it's opening or closing. I wish I could deprogram this bonging. And there we go. Open your tailgate exactly how you want it to and close it how you want it to as well. I think that's a job well done. Okay, next up, I want to talk about the hard drive that's set within the infotainment system called the jukebox that you can record music to. You would think because there is a CD drive, you could put CDs into the system and then record them directly to the jukebox, but you can't. I presume for copyright reasons, Audi make you record the CD to an SD card, and then you can put the SD card into the infotainment system and then copy that to the hard drive. Well, that's not exactly technology making life easy for you, is it? I don't think there's any issues from a legality or a moral perspective when it comes to sticking the CD in if you own it and copying it to the hard drive directly. And luckily, Audi will let us do that with VCDS. Let me just show you what it's like now. Let's turn the ignition on. Okay, so it's playing the CD, but we don't we want, we want more than that. We want to copy. So let's go into settings and then it actually teases you. Oh yeah, fill, delete, jukebox. It's, it was grayed out, but it lets you select it. But when you go further to copy data to jukebox, it won't let you pick any of the sources that are available, including the CD, which is in there that it's playing. So let me show you how to tweak the infotainment system to allow you to copy directly to the jukebox. Okay, for this one, we need to go into the information electronics module, that's number 5F, and then we need to go into coding. Once again, we're gonna use the long coding helper, but this is experimental coding. So there's a bit of a disclaimer there you need to click on, but it's fine. And then we need to find byte 24 and bit number five, which says re ripping media data activated. So select that, check that box, and then click do it to save the coding it's quite happy with that we also need to go into adaptation within the same module now and we need to select a, ch um, a channel that i've searched for using media but if you search using optical you'll have much less to pick from so copy multimedia data optical drive select that and then change that from off to on click do it confirm your changes and uh, it's just going to read it to check that that's been updated correctly. There we are, it's on, so go back out of the module. Okay, with the new coding and adaptation set, we just need to reboot the system because it won't accept the changes unless you do this. So we're pressing the menu button, the main infotainment knob, and the top right segment. And we're getting the splash screen now. The system's just rebooting. And I can hear, take a look around the theme tune. Okay, let's go into settings now, and then fill to the jukebox. Still grayed out. Uh, 
Okay, it's it's come to life now, and it's looking pretty good. Copy data to Jukebox, and the one media source that's available is a CD. Press on that, and we want high quality. Continue. And there we go, it's um, starting now. Do not have to do anything else? Press all for all, di all tracks. And then what? Copy, top left. Copying in the background. So you can just carry on doing what you're doing. So that is a good result, guys. I had this problem with my Boxster. It's got exactly the same procedure, but because I don't do diagnostics for Porsches, I have to live with it while on this car. It does make life a lot easier. And it's great to have your CDs in the car, uh, on the hard drive and you don't have to sort of store all these in the car. That is what I call technological progress. Now we all know about the seatbelt reminder bong that came in with cars, I think around sort of 2000, 2005-ish. Obviously it's very, very important that you wear your seatbelt when you're driving, but there are situations where you're not being irresponsible, where you might be driving the car very slowly or in a car park or on a private road or on your driveway, where the seatbelt will bong at you and it can be quite annoying. The good news is there's a very easy way to switch that off. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, for this one, we need module 17 instruments and we're going into coding. Again, long coding helper. There's a couple of disclaimers there about experimental coding, but do not worry about that. In byte zero, we need to change from this drop down menu to seatbelt warning off and then click do it to save your changes and uh, it's happy with that coding and that is the seatbelt warning turned off. Okay, now let's talk about the start stop system, which turns the engine off when the car is stationary. It's been on cars now for about 20 years. I think Volkswagen Group were probably later than BMW, but it's a very, very popular thing for owners to turn off completely or to adapt, which is what we're gonna do today. I don't actually mind it. I like the concept, it does save MPG, but it also can be really annoying, especially when you're in a queue of traffic at a junction, which isn't traffic light controlled. You can be stationary for a very short period of time and the engine will shut off and come back on again almost immediately, which can't be A, good for the car or B, particularly efficient. I do like it though when you're at traffic lights, particularly temporary lights, where you can be stationary for a long time. It works really well then, but I wanna choose when it works and I want to turn it on more often than I want to turn it off. So what I'm going to do today, rather than turn it off completely or to invert it, which means that when it's turned on, it's turned off. I can't really see the benefit of that. All we're going to do is make sure that it remembers how it was last set. So if you turn the engine off now with start stop off, it will turn back on with it on. What we're going to do is make sure that it turns it turns off with it off and when you turn it back on again it stays off pretty simple really just it remembers the last setting basically so let me show you how to do that okay this time we need the central electrics module number 09 and as before we need to log in so take the security access option and enter login code 20113 this enables adaptation so go into the adaptation section and go to channel 34 here, the stored number is 20. If we add 32 to that, the start-stop system setting will be remembered when you turn the engine off and back on again. There are other options. I'll put those in the description of the video below. So save 52 to channel 34. Just check it, saved it okay, yep. And then go out of the module. And now, if you turn the start-stop system off by illuminating the warning light, then turn the engine off. When you turn it back on again, the light is still illuminated, meaning the start-stop system is off. Job done. Okay, next up I want to talk about a function that's enabled from the factory, but according to the internet isn't it to everybody's liking, and that includes me. I'm talking about the fact that the rear wiper will operate automatically if you have the front wipers on and you select reverse gear. Now for some people this might be the coolest thing in the world ever, but for me I don't like it because quite often in the winter the rear screen is covered in grit and other dirt and if you operate the wiper without cleaning it properly you'll end up damaging the glass also on a day like today the front of the car has defrosted with the sun but the back is still covered in ice and if your rear wiper mechanism is frozen up trying to operate it then means that you could burn out the motor i've seen that quite a few times before so i'm going to show you how to disable it obviously if you still need to use it you can use it manually 
Okay, for this we need the central electrics module number 09 and we need to log in. So take the security access option. The login code is 20113 and that enables adaptation. Go into adaptation and you're looking for automatic rear window wiping with reverse gear. By default, this is going to be value one, which is activated. If you set this to zero, it will deactivate it, save those changes and job done. Okay, now the bit I think you've all been waiting for, how to enable Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for free on your C7.5, A6, S6 and RS6. I say C7.5 specifically because you have to have a USB slot in the center console with a picture of a smartphone by it. If you haven't got that, this will not work. If you have, then almost definitely it will. Now I can't take credit for this because I found it on another YouTube channel. The channel is Mr. Fix, MR hyphen fix. And on there, there's lots of automotive um, DIY guys and other things. It's really a really good channel, but obviously the one that got my attention the most was how to enable CarPlay for free. I didn't really believe it. I thought it was a bit of a scam, but then I read the comments and there were loads and loads of really positive comments from people from all around the world. Basically, there's a file in that video's description that you download onto an SD card. You have to make sure it's um, FAT32 formatted, and then you stick that in to the SD slot on your infotainment system. You go into, I think, the engineering menu on the infotainment system using keystrokes for the buttons down here. You don't need diagnostics. And then you say update, and it updates. And then, incredibly, you have CarPlay or Android Auto, whichever you prefer. So you, and I don't think there's an awful lot of risk of messing up your system, but just follow the instructions very carefully. There's some something to do about the Bose amp not being updated. I haven't done that and it's fine. I've been running it for probably about two months now and I've not had a problem with it, apart from the fact that you need to make sure you use a USB cable that actually is capable of running CarPlay. Some of them just do charging, some of them will do data, so you connect to a computer, but won't do CarPlay. Some of them will do all three. This one I think works. It's quite a cheap one off eBay. Other ones don't. So we're going to put the ignition on. We're going to plug the phone into the correct USB port of the two, because there are two and one's not marked for smartphones. We'll let that start up and then we'll just leave that there. You can just put it away now. You won't need it when you're driving because we've got this. So it says in initializing Audi smartphone interface. Right. And it's just fired up. It's usually a bit quicker than that. Um, so there we have it. There's no touch screen, unfortunately, but it's still better to have CarPlay on here using the MMI than not at all. It's brilliant. I've been using Waze. Quite often I'll set the destination up on here and just let it talk to me through there rather than communicate with it through the MMI. But there's also voice control which very rarely works. Should we give it a go? Take me to Coventry. Okay, yeah, that's a load of rubbish then. Maybe it's just Waze. Let's try Apple Maps, which is that one. Search. That's voice. Where would you like to go? Take me to the British Motor Museum. Getting directions to British Motor Museum. And that works perfectly fine. So yeah, ways is a bit rubbish when it comes to voice control, but actually Apple Maps is brilliant. Starting route to British Motor Museum. There we go. So yeah, there you go, free Apple CarPlay. Now, interestingly, in the brochure, it's only a £250 option, so I really don't know why people didn't go for it. Maybe it was a little bit too early for people to fully appreciate its benefits, but the good news is you don't have to go to a dealer, you don't have to go to a retrofitter, you can just do it yourself for free. Well guys, I hope you found this video useful. There is a lot more you can do to these cars with VCDS and I can cover in a video. So I put links to the websites that tell you exactly what you can do in the description of the video below. I've also put a link to the free Apple CarPlay Android Auto video from Mr. Fix. The next video on this car will talk about the cosmetic modifications that I've done to it. The highlight of that video will be 
how you can do a modification that would have been £1,500 as a factory option when the car was new. You can do it today for just £87. As ever, guys, thanks for watching. Keep subscribing, keep commenting, and I'll see you for the next one very soon.